Today's EdTech Showdown is about the best digital resource for interactive lessons. And you cannot beat my very favorite, the super cool Jamboard board. The easiest way to get into Jamboard is to come to your drive and go to new, come down to more, and then you can select Google Jamboard here or you can go to your array of apps right here and search for Jamboard down here. I've already moved mine up into the commonly used section. You may have to scroll down a little bit more to find yours, but you can easily move that to any location that you want for easy access. So when I open my Jamboards, you'll see I have a lot of Jamboards to choose from. And to start a new one, I would come down here to this plus sign right there to add in a new Jamboard. You want to give it a name up here. You can add additional slides here. You can even click on it right there and you can see the slides and add additional ones or hit the three dots and duplicate or delete them. One thing to keep in mind about Jamboard is if you want it to be interactive, which is the whole point of this video today, you want to make sure it is edible by your students. So you're going to click share. You're going to come down here and share with Granberry ISD and drop them down as editors and save that change by clicking done. A new feature of Jamboard that is super cool is that now you can see the version history Clicking on the three dots, come down to see version history like you can on slides and docs and all other types of uh, Google products. And you can click here and see who has made what edits and when. And that's super good if you're concerned about kids not taking care of business or doing something to other students' notes. You can easily create a template to set as your background by clicking set background and coming to image here and doing a search to find your background image. There's your background image and then you can add images on top. And those can be your movable objects while your template that's set as the background is not movable. Over on this far left, you have a pen tool. You can expand that out and change the thickness and the style, change the color. You have an eraser tool. This is a pointer tool to get you to where you can click and move objects around. This is your sticky note. You can change the colors and then you can type and save. And then once it pops in, you can cancel extras and you can click on those and reorder, resize, and move around. And then you can also upload images. You can pull from um, your laptop or from your Google image search or your Google Drive. This right here, these are some shapes you can choose from. Here are text boxes, and here's a laser pointer to do demonstrations. And you'll notice that it looks like it's marking, but it disappears after you point out an object. I'm going to show you a Kinder collection that we have, uh, just to give you an idea of what you can do with uh, pre-primer kiddos. Here's a daily calendar with some movable objects. Again, you can use these tools on the left. You can do the weather, uh, do some math, talk about seasons and the day and month and the year. This is a daily number with some tally marks and some base 10 models. Here's some math work where students can uh, draw in word form and do counting and comparing. 
This is a great tool for math where you add the Chrome extension Equatio and you can insert uh, images for math, such as the fractions here with fraction tiles, and you can do some drag and drop to show what represents what with these pie shapes. You can do some more equivalent fractions representations. These are some ideas for use with uh, time and clocks. And here's some protractors to measure angles and how to plot points on a graph. This is some information on drag and drop equations to uh, show on the correct graphs. Here is a template you can use for discussion boards where you can write a prompt here, assign students a number, they click on that and write their opinions to do some discussions in a back channel. You can also insert images to do some labeling. You can also do some hotspots with mapping. You can reorder and do some drag and drop with the periodic table here. This is a great light bright activity with the periodic table where you can click on these little shapes, hit the three dots and duplicate and then move things to their correct location. This is some more math work with quadratic key features. Here's a sample simile simulator where students add nouns and then turn it into a simile sentence using that noun. Here's some vocabulary work with a Pac-Man board game where these ghosts are movable and Pac-Mans are movable and they match the definition with the vocabulary word. Here's some comparison and opinion pieces where they have images inserted and students are going to choose which art history style they like best and why. And here's some great research-based tools. You start with a student one having a slide to themselves where they take notes on a topic. Student two has their own slide to take notes on a topic. And then they compare their notes and they show almost like a Venn diagram. What student one has that student two does not is in this first column. What they have together is in the middle column. And what student two has that student one doesn't have in the far right column. I honestly can't say enough about Jamboard. It is my absolute favorite interactive lesson tool for your classroom. If you're interested in learning more about using Jamboard in your classroom, please reach out to Instructional Technology, either Jason or I, so we can get this started in your classroom as soon as possible. Please vote for Stacy Roaming's Jamboard for interactive lessons today.